Hey, what's that, up, folks? Derek's boy, not one here. It is week 14. We have new team of the week slash fantasy cards and packs, and they are Cordo Patterson, Jonathan Masterwall, Shane Vereen, Byron Maxwell, Jason Campbell, Donald Butler, Daniel Thomas, Tyson Jackson, with the best card this week being a Matt Prater, who is a kicker. And yeah, I have no idea why our best card is a kicker, but it is what it is. We also got the defensive star of the week being Junior Gallette. You got to collect all four or five collectibles to get that, so... I think this might be the actually worst fantasy card week to date. Like, the one two weeks ago was pretty bad as well with the Benny Cunningham, all those bad cards. That one was so bad, I didn't even do a review over it. So, this one might be second worst or, or worst of all time. Just because the kicker is number one player. Like, I don't understand why. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop spoiling the video for you guys. So, I'm going to go ahead and get into the card review for you guys. And let's see how they stack up compared to the other stuff. The first card we're looking at this week is Daniel Thomas, and you fantasy football players know about Daniel Thomas and Lamar Miller, very, very bad running backs for Miami. I have no idea why Miami got rid of Reggie Bush, considering that Reggie Bush is having a good season, while Daniel Thomas and Lamar Miller are out there averaging 2.2 yards to carry. But against the Steelers, this guy went off 16 rush, 105 yards, and a touchdown. It was kind of expected, considering that a lot of running backs go off on Pittsburgh. Card is not that good. It's pretty bad, but the price is cheap. So if you guys are getting the game for Christmas, getting the game for uh, getting it for Black Friday, and you got like a thousand or two thousand coins, you need to get running back. I will come pick him up. But really, not a really fair comparison. Anybody back on my team, he's not as fast. He has terrible carry and a pretty bad truck. So he seems like a big physical back, but that, ter that carry is not going to be really good when it comes to this game. When fumbles are so random and you guys are high carry, at least it uh, make that less probable to happen. So Daniel Thomas' card is not that impressive, but hey, it's only a thousand coins, so can't really complain about that too much. Here is Tyson Jackson. If you guys are wondering, this guy is not a left end. He is a defensive tackle. Dontari Poe plays the nose guard spot. Tyson Jackson plays a three technique, and they got Tom Ali or Justin Hughes rushing a passer. So he does not have the left end spot in my book just because of that defensive scheme. Plus, this guy's stats really reflect that. He has very similar speed to Greg Hardy, but the only difference is Greg Hardy is a little more athletic. Tyson Jackson is a little bit heavier. Like he's a little bit bigger in weight and bigger in size, which makes him a lot more of a liability on the outside, especially with that 76 speed, that 84 block shit. Imagine what's going to happen. You got like RG3, Colin Kaepernick, Cam Newton rushes to the outside. This guy will not be able to get to them for the most part, but he will be a good inside technique type player. I'm going to try him out for you guys, let you guys tell how he plays. I've got on my team right now. I put him in my pack, and I want to see what overall would jump up to from a left end to a D tackle, and it actually dropped. So I'm not sure if they fixed that or if just this guy just drops because I know the Kevin Williams, he also, his rating increases. He's a 91 right end. and goes 92 defensive tackle. So I wonder why that is, but I'm going to try him out for you guys. But just so you know, he is not a left end. So if you guys are looking for a good left end, He's not the guy for you, but he might make a good defensive tackle for anybody's team. Here is the Donald Butler, 87 overall middle linebacker, and I actually like this guy's card. He has some pretty nice attributes. 94 tackle, 90 block shit, 93 pursuit. That is a good trio right there. Speed and agility are about the same. I can deal with that, though. Not the fastest linebacker, but it'll get the job done. He has himself an 80 zone coverage, by the way, if you guys are wondering. This guy is a good zone coverage linebacker with 80 overall. That's better than most, I want to say. I think it's better than Luke Keekley's. Like, that's way better than Luke Keekley's, I want to say. He also has himself, like, an 83 hit power. So, it's middle-of-the-road hit power, but it's still pretty nice. But his card is pretty pretty nice for its price. 2,800 coins, you get yourself a nice, reliable zone coverage linebacker that can also shed blocks when a guy gets in his face. I like that because of it. I usually hate when people run the ball in this game because my linebackers and linemen have terrible block shed but if a guy with good block shed can get up there in their face and make them miss and get to the running back that is a good job out of me so this guy not only can rush the passer but he can also get drop back in coverage and do some good jobs there so this guy is a nice pickup i want to say it'll get down to two thousand coins thousand coins before the end of the week so pick him up then but as of now price really is not that bad so pick him up if you guys need a good zone coverage linebacker and if you don't there should be other cards coming out sometime soon. So I think I might have been right. This might be the worst batch of fantasy cards to ever come out in this game so far. Considering that everything is 2,000 coins, it seems like. like. Everything is so damn cheap. And it's amazing that nobody wants these cards. They just sell them immediately when they get them. Like, it's amazing. If you guys need to get quarterback, I guess Jason Cam might be the guy for you. I was on the way to school, and I'm like, I wonder what this guy's stats going to look like. I checked it out real quick. Really? Like, why did we like why did we get Jason Campbell? Why couldn't we get a Josh McCown? Like, I don't understand it at all. But hey, it is what it is. This guy's stats are so not worth it at all. The guy has 85 throw accuracy. Like, who's gonna be using this quarterback? 93 throw power, 
80 speed like honestly like oh that's this is not a good card like this is not a good card i wish i had a better quarterback to compare this guy to like i wish i had like a middle of the road quarterback to compare this guy to for you so you know what i'm gonna come right back and find a quarterback that's around the same exact price who has better stats all right i'm back i might have found a quarterback with similar stats i haven't checked just yet but let's see let's see how this 2000 jason campbell cost compared to this free russell Wilson. let's check it out yeah why would anybody buy this card? Like, honestly, like, unless you're a Browns fan or you just have no coins on your team, this 80 whole front row supposed to be got for free is a lot better than this Jason Campbell. It's, oh my goodness. Yeah, these fantasy cards are pretty bad this week. They're very bad, and unfortunately, Jason Campbell's card came out at the wrong time, and the fact that he has no good stat other than throw power. Why, like, any, does anything on this card represent a 98 overall, or 88 overall? I don't think anything. Everything on here represents, like, an 84. I, uh, whatever. Whatever. Now, through all the cheap cards and bad cards this week, this Byron Maxwell guy might be a sleeper. This guy's card is pretty nice. 6'1", 88 press. That's just a good combination right there. A big physical quarterback with a high press. 92 speed, 90 man, 90 zone. That's really good. Pretty mediocre awareness and play recognition, but that's pretty nice. I checked this guy's depth chart stats out. Has 91 jump, which is pretty good, but it's not as good as most cornerbacks. He also has like a 70 catch, which is pretty bad. So I like this guy's card, though. Like, he seems like he'd be a good number one, number two cornerback, especially because he's six foot one. He can guard mostly all receivers in this game. He also has himself an 88 press with a pretty nice and consistent speed, man coverage, and zone. So I'm going to try him out for you guys, see how he plays. Unfortunately, I cannot compare him right now because they still have that center glitch where I can look, can look at him compared to a center, which I have no idea why they haven't fixed yet. It makes it so difficult to compare cards, <laughs> and it is annoying, but this Byron Maxwell, take my word for it, this guy might be a pretty nice pickup for around 5,000 coins for anybody's team, but if you're hesitant about it, hold off. I'm going to go ahead and buy this card sometime soon and give you guys a little bit of a play review with him. Another good card this week is Shane Vereen going for 13,000 coins. I'm going to assume that this guy's price will drop below 10,000 coins sometime soon. So if you guys want to pick him up, wait until then. This guy's card is actually pretty nice. 93 speed, 94 agility, 95 acceleration, and everything else on the card is pretty middle of the road. But I will point out this guy has an 85 catching, which is pretty nice. He has himself an 82 jumping, a 96 injury. So this guy is very, very durable. So I like this guy's card already. 90 spin move, 86 juke move, and... Everything else is pretty mediocre, but I like running backs that are versatile. I like running backs that can also receive the ball, return the ball, and also uh, run the ball. And this guy has those three things I'm looking for in a running back. So I'm going to go ahead and compare this guy to the guy I spent 50K on in Reggie Bush. And right now, Reggie Bush is 30,000 coins. Shane Marines are at 12,000 coins. It will be 10,000 coins sometime soon. These guys' stats are very similar. Reggie Bush has an elusiveness, but everything else is pretty much the same. And if I had to choose a card, and I was being objective about this, if I was just starting my team today, I had 50,000 coins to spend, who would I buy? And I would buy Shane Vereen just because his price is cheaper, his stats are relatively the same, but if I wasn't looking at this objectively, I would go Reggie Bush because I, I don't, Reggie Bush has been so good in my team, like he's been playing very well, not fumbling it, playing extremely at a high level, and I love Reggie Bush's card, so I would go with him because I'm just a big fan of him, but Shane Vereen's card is very nice as well. And both these guys can not only receive the ball, return the ball, and also run the ball. So that's a good combination to find in any running back. And Chamberine is that dude if you guys are looking for him. Here is Jonathan Massaqua, 91 right defensive end. And at first glance, I'm like, why is this guy 91 overall? He has a 94 power move and a 91 injury. Those are this guy's highest attributes. I'm like, this card is pretty bad. This guy is a bum. He's not good whatsoever. But I went ahead and compared this guy to Charles Johnson. And let's just say the Falcon actually beats the Panther this time. You guys can cl clearly see that Masquad has a higher tackle and a higher block shot, which is really, really nice. Johnson has him in the strength category and also in the awareness. He's a little bit smarter, but I feel like what Masquad lacks in awareness and lacks in strength will make up for in tackle and block shooting, which is pretty nice. Primary was pretty much a push and pursuit is also a push when it comes to linemen. So I like this guy's card. I was kind of negative about it, but as looking at it as a full... At, like looking at it as a whole, I'm gonna go with Jonathan Masco over Charles Johnson just because his price is cheaper and he has a higher block and a higher tackle. So I'll definitely try to pick him up, even though I hate the pan I hate the Falcons and I do not want to pick a Falcon player up, but I might have to pick this guy up because this guy's card is pretty nice. Here is Cardo Patterson, our offensive star this week, going for 45,000 coins, and I have no idea why this guy is going for so much. This guy's attributes aren't the best. 95 speed, that's great. 95 agility, that's great. I will also point out he has a 96 acceleration, a 95 jumping, 
96 droop move, 92 spin move. Pretty nice. But everything else on this card is in the middle of the road when it comes to wide receiver. This card is very similar to Jacoby Jones who came out about last week. And his price is doubled, it seems like. And it's kind of crazy. Right now, Cordo Patterson has an 87 catching, 85 catching in traffic. Pretty bad. And a pretty bad release. So if you get this guy a ball in the open field, he'll do wonders for you. But this guy as a receiver is not who I'll be looking for right now. That six foot one height is pretty nice, but right now I'm using Tavon Austin, and Tavon Austin has very good speed, good agility, and he also has pretty get better catching stats and route running, so it's kind of funny to see, but Tavon Austin is a lot smaller, which might be a problem when it comes to fumbling the ball, so a nice second option would be Demarius Thomas. There is a Demarius Thomas BCA going for 20,000 coins, there also is an elite Demarius Thomas going for about 30,000 coins, so if you guys had to pick a receiver, I would go with Demarius Thomas because he has better catching stats, he has similar speed, and he's also a lot cheaper. So if you guys are looking for a nice, tall, reliable wide receiver that can return kicks and also catch the ball effectively, Demarius Thomas is your guy for you. And plus, you're going to save 20,000 coins to pick him up anyway. So that is my advice to you guys to not buying Cordell Patterson. Just wait till his price drops for pick up Demarius Thomas. I promise you, Thomas is a pretty nice card in this game. And Cordell Patterson really is not worth 45,000 coins with those catching stats. Here is Matt Prater, 97 overall kicker, going for 50,000 coins. And I posed the question on Twitter, what is this kick power? Because a lot of guys on Twitter weren't really asking that question. They are just like, oh my goodness, Matt Prater, 97, 97 kicker, going to be an amazing card. I'm like, nah, nah, man. What is this guy's kick power? Because I happen to have his, his uh, 80 overall bronze card. He has 97 kick power, and Madden in the past has not given us any reason to think they're going to do something amazing by giving this guy 99 kick power, considering that they dropped a Ryan Suckup, who had worse kick power, going for 30,000 coins, you could buy the bronze Matt Prater for 97 kick power. I didn't understand that logic whatsoever, people people bought that kicker for some reason. Then he also dropped the Shane Leckler, with like a 93 kick power. Like, what are they doing? Like, you guys are not giving these guys good kicking power for what their price is. Like, it didn't make no sense to me whatsoever, so I thought that Matt Prater's kick power might be like a 97, same as his bronze car, but boy, was I wrong. He has 99 kick power, 95 kick accuracy. The night card is really, really nice. I like this guy's card, but would I pay 50k for it? Bleep, though. This card really is not worth that, considering that I have this 97 Matt Prater, who's going for around 3,000 coins, and 97, 99 kick power, it might make a difference with touchbacks, and also maybe this fantasy car can make 67-yard field goals. I want to say I made like a 65-yard field goal with Matt Prater Bronze. I might be wrong about that. I'm going to actually do a video sometime soon for you guys, showcasing the kick power on Matt Prater. I'm going to go to a connected careers or private online thing, a private practice mode, and just kick field goals with 99 kicker to see what is, oh, how far you can kick it in the game. So, But right now, if you guys want a good kicker, you guys can go ahead and get yourself a bronze Matt Prater for 3,000 coins. A second option would be not, uh, like a Greg Zerline going for around 1,000 coins, 97 kick power as well. But 50k for a kicker, kind of absurd right now. Until his price drops, I highly doubt it's going to, but if it ever does, maybe 20,000 coins would be a good price for it, but I still don't pay that much for it. I'll pay like 5,000 coins for this guy's card, but 20,000 coins is kind of pushing it, and 50s is definitely hell no. Junior Gallette is our final card this week, and I'm comparing him to Von Miller and also Aldon Smith because... One, they play in the same defensive scheme, the 3-4 scheme, the Saints, Broncos, and the 49ers, and he also rushed the passers, so I'm liking the variety you got here. You got Von Miller going for 20,000 coins, you got Gallette going for right around 32,000 coins for all four collectibles, and we also got Aldon Smith, who's going for around 30,000 coins as well, so these cars are very close in price range, and I check these guys' attributes out, and right now, off the bat, the 95 block shot that Gallette has is really amazing. At 95 block shots, higher than Von Miller's by 9, and higher than Aldis Smith by 6. That is a big upgrade in the block shooting category, especially a guy with a 96 finesse move. That is great. Von Miller's finesse move is a 95, and Aldon Smith, I believe, is an 88. But Aldon Smith's power move is a 96 as well, so... Alden Smith is not a finesse type player. He's more of a power, and that is nice as well. So you guys got variety here. You got finesse move, finesse move, a good block shit, or a guy which is just very, very strong and get to the quarterback that way. So it comes down to what you guys want on your defensive front. Right now, I'm leaning towards Junior Gallette. Even though I'm a Panther fan, I don't really want to use this guy, but this guy's card is very, very well. And like It has like a 93 acceleration, I want to say. This guy's card is stacked. Like I like it when I'm seeing out of Gallette. 93 acceleration, 92 injury, has himself a 90 play recognition, and also 90 hit power. So this guy is a nice, nice player. I'm definitely going to have to pick him up. Hopefully his price gets a little bit cheaper. I'm hoping he comes down around 20,000, 25,000 coins to get because right now it's at 32,000. Not that big of a difference in price, but I'm cheap. So I'm liking Galette a lot. So I think I'm going to pick him up, and you guys should too if his price does get cheaper and the collectibles become more, more um, 
out there, but if you had to pick one that wasn't galette, because I know how you guys, especially me, I don't like doing these collections, especially when I can't sell the card. I hate doing them, but if I had to pick one between Von Miller and Alden Smith, I would go with Von Miller because his price is cheaper, and he plays very, very well, but galette should be like a Von Miller, but just on drugs, so keep that in mind. Go with galette because this guy's card is absolutely stacked. Like, ugh. Card is amazing, and I'm, I hate to admit that, but that Saint card is a, mo is, a, is a boss. That Saint card is a boss. And that is the video, folks. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like on the video. And before I go, if you guys can leave a comment below stating whether or not you agree with my assessment, saying that this might be one of the worst weeks of fantasy cards. And if I'm wrong, prove me wrong by leaving a, an example of me being wrong. But before I go, again, this week's football outsider cards are going to be a limited edition Jordan Cameron. We also got an Evan Mathis offensive lineman, Paul Puzlesny, middle linebacker from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And we have two cards that have no bleeping idea why they got outsider consideration and nominations. Like, it's weird. Like, why did they give us a Derrick Rogers and a Jeremy Ross? Jeremy Ross could have been a fantasy card this week, and Derrick Rogers could have been a fantasy card this week. But hey, it is what it is. But that's the video. I am the Texas boy. I am out of this mother bleeper. Peace.